What's good team? Welcome to another Small James coding tutorial where today we're going to be discussing the future of data fetching in React using the new use hook that is available in the experimental version of React. We can do away with needing a whole lot of different React hooks to fetch our data, having use effect blocks everywhere, having a whole lot of states that we have to manage for loading error and data states. And with just React Suspense and the use hook, we can make it infinitely simpler. So if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and sub and let's get into it. So we're going to start off by looking at an example of how data was traditionally fetched inside of React. So here we have a web application that has some notes and we have this note component and we render out three of them inside of our app. So it's a pretty simple uh, web application and we can see that we just use the classic combo of a use effect block and a use state block to essentially call a fetch data function. It's an asynchronous function. Inside of our fetch data function, we have a try block. That's where we execute our network request to the API and get back a response. We catch any errors and after everything, we set the loading to false and then we render out the information on the page. And then down below, if loading is true, we render out a loading state. And if it's not, then we render out the contents of the page. So if I refresh this page, we have a very short loading state, and then we render out the actual content of the three different posts. Now there's a lot of code that's gone into just fetching a little bit of information. And it really becomes quite cumbersome if you're having to make a large number of fetch requests inside of your application. Not to mention that we're having to use two different React hooks, set two different states and then have this you know, complicated try catch block. We actually have to define the function within the use effect and then call it. And the whole thing is just too much effort. But as I mentioned at the start of the video, this is all going out the window with the experimental version of React. So if we're going to upgrade to use React suspense and the use hook, then the first thing we're gonna to have to do is come over to our package.json and make sure that we have the experimental versions of React and React DOM. So if you're also looking to install the experimental version of React in your project, then this is the command that you'll wanna run in your terminal and that will upgrade your version of React so that you can use the suspense tags and use the use hook. Now, just a small caveat that this is still in an experimental mode, so it's not something that you would want to use in your production code just yet, but very soon this will become the common practice. So now that we've upgraded to the experimental version of React, we can go ahead and gut a whole lot of this code and replace it for a very simple suspense block, some suspense tags inside of our JSX and just the use hook to fetch our data. And we can start doing that by first copying this function and pasting it above our component and we can get rid of the whole try catch and finally blocks, all of the set states so that we just have this simple fetch call and this res data. The second thing we can do is actually just cut out this state just here, this use effect, and we can also get rid of our loading block. And believe it or not, we can even get rid of the use state that we've set up above. And we can change these inputs up the top to just the use hook and the suspense tag. Now that we have both of those imported, we're just going to upgrade our, uh, upgrade our React fragments just here to use the suspense tag. And the suspense tag checks if any of the child elements have any unfulfilled promises within the code. And if it finds that there is any unfulfilled promise code within the children elements, you give it what's known as the fallback attribute. And in here you can pass in either some JSX. So you could pass in an H1 tag that says loading dot, 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 or you could pass it in as a string and just say loading, however you like to do it. We're going to pass in as a component. You could even define a loading component just above and pass that down. And once again, the suspense wrapper is going to check if any of the child elements have any unfulfilled promises. For example, they've sent a network request to the API and it hasn't been fulfilled yet. We don't have that information. And so, you know, we can't render out data.title, for example. And if it finds that that's the case, then it will only render out the loading condition until the promises are fulfilled. So you just wanna be a little bit considerate as to where you wrap your code with the suspense blocks. Typically it should be just around the code that is you know, calling to an API or will have some promise handling. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually remove the secondary await just here so that this function actually returns a promise and we are literally just going to return res.json. So that is the promise that our fetch data function is going to return. It's going to return the res from this. We're actually gonna to have to accept the ID as a function call just there. And now this is the most crazy simple part. We can just say const data is equal to the use hook 
and pass in fetch data and the ID. Call that as a method and pass in the ID as an argument. With these simple changes, we can see how much simpler our code is. We don't have to manage a whole lot of state. We don't have these random use effects blocks. And if I save this code and reload the page, we can see we have the exact same output. And if we inspect the page, come over to the network tab and throttle our application to a slow 3G. When I refresh this page, we get this loading state back until the data is loaded and then it is rendered on the page. Absolutely phenomenal. It's literally that simple. You absolutely have to make sure that you use these suspense tags to wrap your code though. If we revert back to just having these fragments just here and I try that again, we see that nothing renders on our page and we're actually just firing out network requests at the speed of sound, so that is not a good thing. So absolutely critical that you wrap your code inside of the suspense tags. So once again, to summarize how this process works, you just wanna make sure that elements within your JSX are looking for information that has not been fulfilled from a promise. So hence we return this res.json, we don't await the output. This gets returned as a promise and until it is fulfilled, we render out the loading state and once it is fulfilled, then we render out the content. Anyway, that's pretty much the whole video. The link to the documentation for this is gonna be down in the description below. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and sub. Make sure to give this a shot and be ready for it to become the best practice implementation for data fetching and APIs soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Super appreciate it and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.